I'm Sukanya. In this video, you will learn about cross-cultural communication and factors that affect it. Thanks to the internet and other technological advancements, our business environment is infinitely expanding. Our workplace today span across various geographical locations and numerous cultures. What can be difficult, however, is understanding how people from different cultures speak, communicate and perceive the world around them. This difficulty is aptly described in the words of Bernard Baruch, an American financier and statesman, and I quote here, We didn't all come over the same ship, but we are all in the same boat, unquote. Cross-cultural communication in an organization deals with understanding different business customs, beliefs, and communication strategies. Understanding cross-cultural communication is important for any company that has a diverse workforce or plans on conducting global business. There are many factors that are vital in understanding cross-cultural communication. Let us look at some of the major factors that affect cross-cultural communication. Number one, high versus low context culture. The concept of high and low context culture relates to how an employee's thoughts, opinions, feelings and upbringing affect how they act within a given culture. Low context cultures have direct individualistic people who tend to base decisions on facts. This type of business person wants specifics noted in contracts and may have issues with trust. With high context cultures, on the other hand, trust is the most important part of business dealings. Individuals from high context cultures might be interested in getting to know the person they are conducting business with in order to get a gut feeling on decision making. They may also be more concerned about business teams and group success rather than individual achievement. Number two, nonverbal differences. Gestures and eye contact are two areas of nonverbal communication that are utilized differently across cultures. Extreme gesturing is considered rude in some cultures while it is normal in other cultures. While pointing may be considered appropriate in some contexts in the United States, it may be considered rude to point towards another person in Japan. Instead, Japanese people might gesture with an open hand with his palm facing up towards the person. Similarly, eye contact is another form of nonverbal communication that is perceived differently by different cultures. In the US, eye contact is a good thing and is seen as a reflection of honesty and straightforwardness. However, in some Asian and Middle Eastern cultures, prolonged eye contact can be seen as rude or aggressive in many situations. Number three. Language differences. The biggest issue dealing with cross-cultural communication is the difficulty created by language barriers. This barrier can be overcome if there is a common language like English that both the parties understand even if not proficient. In the absence of a common language, there are some strategies that people can use to help establish a rapport. You can explain yourself without words by using emotions, facial expressions and other nonverbal cues. He can also use drawings and ask for an interpreter. Number four, power distance. Power distance relates to how power is distributed within an organization. A low power distance would mean that there are more informal hierarchies that allow for interaction between executives and their subordinates. Managers ask for feedback from employees and will even socialize with subordinates. A culture of high power distance would typically be very hierarchical in nature and have severe differences in authority. Questioning, challenging or even suggesting to a higher authority may be taken as arrogance. I hope this video has given you an overview of cross-cultural communication and the factors affecting it. Thank you for watching this video.